What is up, everybody? It's your boys, Jen and Juice, back at it again. And today, we got a unique conversation that we want to bring to you guys. Is this uh, new account really good for the hobby? We'll find out. All right, everybody. So as you can see, that this is uh, going to be a nice little discussion video. Um, I came across an Instagram profile called Break Comp. Ooh. Break Comp, it looks like they aggregate everybody's breaks. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a breaker, you can reach out to them. But basically, they rank the breaks and how much their total value, um, the breaker selling the breaks, or how much the team is, and so forth. And they basically present the data to you, the viewer, which is really cool. Uh, I kind of like the concept. It's like crazy to see some of these insane break prices, how much they vary over oh, yeah, certain breaks one of the ones more recently was a absolute um football break where i think the average price was like six grand for the entire break uh, a, a, a 12 box case and like someone uh, like someone else has their break total of like 10 grand oh wow and it's like drastic like from top to bottom people are selling it for six six and then all the way down at the bottom was like, all right, I'm going to sell my case for like 10 something, which is absolutely insane. Because the only thing that's cool about absolute football is kaboom. Yeah. Everything else is just garbage. The cards always come out terrible. It's got this weird thing with the thick cards. Like, it's just not a great product overall. And just to see the price difference really like, all right, I, we, we got to talk about this. Well, there's tons of there's tons of breakers, too, <clears throat> and yeah. that I didn't realize. And, you know, it's all over the place pricing. So it's kind of cool to be able to see <clears throat> some of the data and just kind of formulate my opinions on who I want to break with. I mean, I always – there's only been – like two or three breakers that I ever broke with. Yeah. Um, and it's just interesting to see like how the breaking space has blown up uh, right. through the pandemic and everything. And then it now it's like really cool to see like data and to see like pricing and how similar or how very different pricing is with everybody. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say it's good for one individual to police, what I, I like about the idea, and you know, I've never talked to these the people who run this account, so I have no idea about their philosophy and what they're actually trying to do. But from the way I view it as, um, if they can continue to pro provide just the data, you know, unbiased, unbiased, data. just the data, and let us, you say data, I say data, by the way, <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, and, um, <laughs> and let them kind of like let us formulate our own opinion. Right. I, I think that would be a hell of a lot more beneficial to the community than a lot of people are thinking because the data is just there right. i think when you get in the back and forth like pissing matches with individuals and so forth i think it's fair to defend yourself but right. also at the same exact time like don't don't get in the nitty-gritty with somebody if someone doesn't like you fuck it move on like right. I, we're right. the same way like right. if someone likes this i'm not gonna sit there and go back and forth with them i'm like all right just move we're trying to convince them to yeah. you know but the, the data is key. The data data is king. Uh, I love absolutely love that. But with the data, you know, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Comes with you got to take it with a little bit of grain of salt because a lot of the big breakers get a lot of their products direct, and then maybe some of the other breakers have to buy their products from you know other sources in the secondary market or get a connection from somebody who you know a store <coughs> may have to make a little bit of profit on, sure. on selling it to a breaker. So. You know, it's it's it passes from the store to the breaker and to you. So the prices may be a little bit more expensive with certain breakers just because of that reason. You. So I don't think we should just strictly take the data and say like, oh, this person is cheaper, this person is too expensive, and attack the person uh, without really knowing their situation. So I think, like you said, take the data, formulate your own opinion. Uh, and then just you know choose which breakers you want to go with, sure. and and don't use it as a platform or to attack right. the breakers by saying like oh you guys are overcharging you're trying to profit all of this without really understanding the situation that they might be in because they may be paying the same retail price and then having to mark it up yeah and I, and I I hear your your opinion on that I definitely can see where you know individuals could be coming from. One thing that, like, now that I'm thinking about it and so forth, like, if I'm a breaker and that situation was for me, I, it, it, it's tough because, like, if you're trying to get into the ball game, like, you're going to, like, almost every small business out there 
because you got to consider yourself a small business at right, that point. Right, right. You're not going to make a ton of profit in the first couple of years. Right, of course. You gotta, I mean, you got to put in in the you got to put in the work, right. or you're trying to build your base. So if gotta, I was getting a case, mm-hmm. and you're right, I, I, I'm I, I'm a huge fan of capitalism. Huge fan of capitalism, and that's my personal opinion. I know some uh, some people out there might think differently, but I think capitalism really uh, is great for the economy. If if I'm an individual, right, and I have that case, how much though should I be making? Like, th- th- there's there's going to be a line in the sand at some point because if you do get a case, and you're right, they're probably getting paying the case maybe a little bit over what a normal case would be for for someone who's getting direct or something what's that threshold then uh as a as a business owner if I, should i try to make profit like i i agree maybe one two grand over but if let's just say uh, it's insane right right like if you're doubling your off. money it it might might seem a little bit price gougy yeah. maybe but you know at, at like, some point i think the i think a breaker or like a business at that point, they're gonna have to take some L's for a little bit until they get their audience up and so forth. Right. And and then they create those relationships that you're talking about, like potentially going direct. But to your point and to how we started this video, I think we gotta leave that up for the person that's v- reviewing the account to leave that up to them uh, as their right, opinion. Right, right, right. So it's a good, it's a, it gives uh, maybe new breakers or uh, breakers who are starting out maybe kind of like a jumping point to kind yeah. of like see like, okay, what is the market like? What are people like willing to pay? But then also, I mean, what happens if you have a customer who's willing to pay like that kind of pricing? And, oh. and you know, I mean, I understand. Like, you know, it's like they can see that, but let, let's just say like, they support that breaker. They really like the yeah. breaker. So they don't care whatever they charge, you know. It's like Well, I mean, you're always going to have people that have dumb money. I mean, like yeah, we, true, we, true. we know individuals <laughs> that are like spur of the moment type of people. Yeah, that just like are going to pay to pay at times. Yeah. It's just like it, it, it's just being in the hobby right now. Transparency, I think needs to become more and more of a thing. Yeah. Um, the pricing issues over the years with the skyrock. I'm okay with the pricing following the trend of the hobby. Yeah. Like when it's fully booming and you're selling out breaks, it, it sucks for a lot of the, the, the smaller individuals and so forth or the individuals that don't have that bankroll. But I can understand that trend and it following. But when the trend is trending downward like it is right now, yeah. um, if you're not... I think it comes down to intelligence. If you're not intelligent enough to dr- address and adjust some of your prices of your breaking right now to stay competitive, again, yeah. making money aside, I'm, I'm happy for you. But to be just so drastically different, and then there's a tool out there that not necessarily is policing, because I don't think we need a policer, because that's no. when you get uh, yeah. into weird situations. Where it's like where you're trying to force people to sell things right. at a certain price. I just think like... It, this this is why I love this product for the data piece and it just taking a look and making sure that it's all right there and, and focusing on that rather than formulating these, these opinions uh, for individuals. But if I'm a breaker and I see this and I'm on that list and say I'm at the bottom, I'm like, holy shit, I look like a scumbag. <laughs> like I need to go ahead and adjust my pricing. Uh, maybe that's why in my... Views have gone down. I got to remain competitive. And, uh, 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 you know, I get it. A lot of other individuals have the opportunity because they may have a card shop or a couple other things where they can get different sources of revenue. But if you're strictly one of these breakers and that's what your business is trying to be, you got to cater to your your people who are buying in your breaks. Right. And I feel like over the years, and, and we've seen it too, an opening product and how many L's we've taken Buddy. for as much money as we've spent for product. I think now, I think it's catching up with the hobby too. And yeah. a lot of people are um, uninterested in taking those huge L's yeah. uh, with product. And and hence why product prices need to come down. And they have been coming down. And, you know, breaks have been... I've been getting in a lot of breaks. I've been getting a lot of breaks with Louisville. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys hear them a lot because we're, you know, really good friends with them. They've been sponsoring the channel and, and stuff like that. 
Uh, for instance, their brakes, they they actually, uh, Garrett turned me on to this and said, hey, check this, this profile out. He would reach out and give his pricings. A lot of breakers actually send these guys their pricing so they can share. Mm-hmm. And like the Louisville's always been competitive, top three, top five, and on most of their posts if you go oh, look. Which is why we the relationship we built over with them was because we realized that their pricing has been the most fair yeah. in terms of like, they take their costs and then factor in a fair price and then put it out there for the community. And so, you know, that's why we built this long-term relationship with them because we felt that, you know, for us, they were transparent with us about pricing and everything. And, yeah. you know, their pricing was the most fair out there. And I, and I think that's the number one thing for a consumer uh, in this hobby to have. Like, if you have multiple different tools, like we all use 130 point and eBay to price out cards, but we really don't have anything to keep breaks in check and that's kind of why i love this idea of break comp um again their profile will be below i, I don't know them never talked to them um i'm really excited what they created um you know the only thing i would say is i mentioned earlier in this video i would keep strictly to the the data, the data and really just focus on that just like provide everybody with as much as they po- like with as much info as you possibly can and let people make their own decision naturally you could potentially become the eBay of breaking uh, in a sense of looking up pricing or the 130 point of breaking looking up pricing and, and so forth I really like it you know their web they have a website I looked at their website it, it, it's it's getting there um, it, the cool thing is you can select any product mm-hmm. and pick uh, any team and they tell you like the average price of that team and then if you click into it they show you what everybody's selling that team for or did sell that team for so you kind of have some history which right. is kind of cool um but yeah um speaking of a few things you brought up uh, spending a lot of money not to ch- completely change it but to give you guys an example of some of the money that we spent because you guys always ask like how much do you guys really spend like so last year culture collision uh Right off the bat, I put an order in, and the order for was like twenty thousand dollars of wax. Wow! This year, they give you guys an example of how much less wax we're or money we're spending on wax. My order is less than five grand. Mm. So we will be opening up some wax, but different content coming from the culture collision piece. Uh, so you guys are there, hit me up, and then Drew and I are going to be probably going to the national um, this year too, which is going to be in Cleveland, which is going to be interesting. But we got a lot of cool videos coming up our way uh, that are going to be non-opening related. Maybe we'll share some more stuff like we did today with BreakCom. If you guys have any other tools out there or anything that we need to know, leave a comment below. But yeah, Gene, anything to add? No, I know we'll probably uh, try to travel a little bit more. Let's check out some of the uh, other shows in other states. So if you know of any good shows in your area, just leave a comment down below and uh, we'll check it out. And uh, who knows, you may see us there this year. Bada bing. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Deuces. Deuces.